Welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm very excited to have Luis Brandmeier with me for the third time. He's made it three times onto our podcast here. I wonder why. Well, just badass energy. The first time around, we talked about his journey out of depression into success, out of a mess into fulfillment and living a happy life. The second time around, we talked about pornography, how Luis was able to conquer pornography addiction. And it was very, very touching and insightful for many people out there. And today I wanted him back on my show and we will be talking about resilience, how to be resilient as fuck in a messy world like we live in today and how to not lose your sanity with everything that's going on right now. Luis, invite us and share with us how you navigate through this crazy world, crazy beautiful world and yeah, maybe share some, some tools that you're using that you would love us to use as well in order to become more resilient. The more resilient we become as individuals, the stronger our relationships are, the stronger our society can be. I can't tell you how excited I am to be back. <laughs> I didn't even know how excited I would be until like just now. I was like, wait a second, this is one of my favorite things to do this year is to jump on the reality screen. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll set some context and then I'll throw out some tools and we'll have some fun. Yes. Um, I have been in the startup world, which is a certain branch of athletics, mind you. <laughs> if you're doing it right, it's, it's like it requires physical, mental, emotional, energetic conditioning um, for, let's see, almost 10 years now. And now what I do is I help heart-centered women coaches scale to six figures in their businesses. And all of that has required me to take excellent care of myself. Now, this, this is part of the answer to the question of resilience because why would we want to be resilient? Most people are content to, quite frankly, most people are content to die with their music inside of them, to live comfortable lives and to, to live lives of quiet desperation. And, and those are not the people that I'm necessarily speaking to. I'm speaking to people who want to live life to the fullest, who want to conquer and master and accomplish things and enjoy things and have not just a good relationship, but the best relationship, have not just uh, the modicum of wealth that they get from their social security or uh, their 401k. I'm, I'm talking like wealth, making more to give more, uh, doing well in order to do good in the world. So the first question that somebody has to answer about resilience is why would they want it? <laughs> For me, it became a necessity because I'm the only one uh, or in the past until I've gathered a team around me of support, like a village, um, I was the only one to keep the ball rolling down the field or to keep the, uh, the needle moving. So for me, um, very early on in my entrepreneurial career, what I noticed was if I'm feeling good, if I'm taking care of myself, it's kind of like when you take care of a fine violin. That violin, it plays better. It makes a better sound. Its music is more appreciated and beautiful. And consider that each one of us is like that fine violin. Uh, we are meant to contribute something really beautiful to the symphony of the world. And when we take exquisite, like luxurious, like I'm talking royal care of ourselves, resilience and the ability to meet anything head on shows up from that. So I, I see this landing. I'm so excited. <laughs> I know this is a podcast, but I get to watch Aurora the whole time. Um, so uh, there are a lot of different things. And I'll just walk you through some of the most important tools that I use regularly. Right? So I do breath work. There is a little something called the nine breath uh, based on the work of Jeff Primack. I think you can find it on YouTube. And it literally relaxes and clears all the muscles in the body. It can induce sort of psychedelic 
type states of like clarity and focus. I use a breath called the MBA or the mind body alignment taught by Kai Von Bodhi. Um, I do the classic, uh, if, if you're in yoga, you already know this, but uh, the, yes, the alternate nostril Nadi Shodana. Um, I do the breath of fire to help wake me up and help me digest things. Um, Cause that's, and to build an energy field. So part of it is noticing where your energy is at and cultivating a high frequency. And here's the thing, I'm not gonna get through all of the tools in the time that we've got, but I've got a PDF called Tools for Owning Your State that I'd love to gift everybody within the sound of the voice of this podcast. Cause I've been working on like, how do we optimize how we're feeling? Mm -hmm. How do we feel good in our bodies? How do we relax and recover from states of high flow or states of high productivity or activity? How do we um, you know, feel good in the midst of our lives? And there's so many answers. I mean, if you're in communication, if you're in action, generally you'll feel better than if you aren't. But then there's also like saturation points. So resilience is built through being aware of yourself and what your flow is moment to moment into mm -hmm. your path of least resistance that lights you up, that, that gets you excited to, to be in action throughout the day. And also noticing when you're done. On my retreat recently, it was awesome because I had such a, and I still do on some level, I'm just you know pre more or less present to it moment by moment, such a connection to my intuition that I was teaching and I was teaching for like an hour and a half. And then there was just this moment where it became very clear. It was like, they're full and they're hungry or, or it's time to finish. All I got, the message that I got was it's time to stop. So I literally, for the first time in, that I can remember in my teaching, I stopped immediately and I, and I checked in. I was like, are you guys hungry? And they were like, yes. All of them nodded their heads. And I was like, okay, so we're stopping here. So it's, it's something that if you don't know when to stop, or you don't know um, that relaxation and recovery is as important as being super productive, then you can end up with problems like adrenal fatigue, which I did, where I, I had insomnia and difficulty sleeping for years because I kept pushing, I just kept working, I just kept fighting. And while it is the case that if you're building a business or creating something in the world, you're 100% responsible for making that happen, and you may have to discover power and will and strength and focus in yourself that you didn't know was there before or build it. At the same time, um, be careful where you point that thing. <laughs> like if you point your willpower in such a way that you're abusing or disrespecting your body or not listening to your body ultimately, then you can end up as lots of six and seven figure entrepreneurs end up, uh, which is burnt out which is unfulfilled by their life. And I've flirted with this several times in the past six months, Aurora, it's not been fun, where I'll go through a period of a week where I, I don't take a day off or two weeks where I'm hitting, I'm, I'm hustling, hustle and grind, grit and determination, which th th there's an ebb and flow to that in business. Sometimes it's more allowing and receiving and being in Ruston, Louisiana, house sitting with my beloved, doing exactly only two hours of work per day and making five grand in a week. Like, okay, great. Um, sometimes it's like, all right, I'm gonna do four or five hours of work today. I'm gonna uh, push myself. I'm gonna stay super focused. It's gonna be from like 10 a.m. to like 8 p.m. somewhere in there with breaks. Oh, <laughs> take breaks and, and put white space on your calendar. That's super big. Yeah. I'm still practicing that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, what's landing so far? Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Like I totally agree with everything that you say. Like the most important thing is that you take good care of yourself and then you can start thinking about giving to others, contributing to the world. Um, I would like to hear your thoughts on consuming content. What I've learned like on my journey is that it's extremely important what kind of news I consume, if at all, I got rid of my TV and I'm so, I feel so good about it. Um, when it comes to social media, who people like follow and, and what content they are consuming, can we talk about how what we consume with our eyes, our ears is also affecting our levels of 
stress? Yes, this is so good. I'm so glad you, you uh, introduced this thread because everything, everything is programming, everything. Mm -hmm. And it's a question of who and what you're choosing to program yourself with. So like whatever you put your attention on grows and expands. Your attention comes through sight, sound, hearing, taste, and touch. So like this morning, I listened to my intuition and my fiance was, she's been sleeping on this couch while she's, you know, finding her footing in the um, Austin area. And, and my intuition was like, just go hold her. Just go cuddle. Cause usually we're very strict about like going and doing our morning routines before we engage which is another lesson I'll just point to, like take time for yourself, with yourself, without any content, without anyone else generally to, to make that the first priority. Cause if you don't, no one else will. Um, but uh, what my touch sense was craving in terms of nurturing was to touch her and to be touched by her. And there's an oxytocin release after 30 seconds of cuddling or a hug that is really nourishing. And, so anyway, um, I spent the next hour, hour and a half, consuming no content from anyone else except for a yoga video. And I, I know how to um, manage that yoga video so that I'm not sold to. Because anybody who's, who's effective and powerful in giving a free yoga class on YouTube, you bet your butt they're, they're marketing really well at the beginning and the end. And so like, I know exactly where to start the video so that my time, my energy, and my attention isn't consumed by someone else's influence or programming. So we want, we want an amount of time where there's nobody that we're impacted by. Next, we want to hang out with those who we want to be like. So those who you follow, those who you put your attention on, you want them to be the ones who are successful in the areas that you're becoming successful in. Or have them be creative collaborators and potential colleagues who you can um, contribute to and uh, add value into the network of and are inspired and uplifted by. Uh, I'd say anyone, and I do this regularly, I do a purge regularly of um, my entire friends list on Facebook every three months or so. And my criteria is, because I'm a creator, I'm not pr primarily on uh, social media to be a consumer. I'm, I'm yeah. here to, a power plant doesn't need energy. A power plant generates energy. So I'm, I'm here to be one of those lights and that lighthouse that, that draws people into their highest expression. So if someone, and there's an app, it's called Friend Filter, you can find out if you're standing in that power of being a creator, you can find out who's acting, interacting with your content and who's not, and you can start deleting those who aren't automatically. And with a clear line in the sand drawn saying, hey, it's nothing personal. It's not that I don't love you. It's not that I don't want to be connected to you. It's that this platform is for my mission and purpose. Hmm. And so the ones that you keep are those who impact your mission and purpose in a positive way, whether by consuming your content and receiving your gifts or harmonizing, synergizing with your gifts. Hmm. And um, there are other interesting habits I have, like on Instagram, everyone follows me, but I follow almost no one. Same on Clubhouse. Like I, there, I know it's polite, probably. This is the assumption, the covert agreement that everyone thinks they're making on Instagram is that if you follow me, I have to follow you. Yeah. Well, maybe, uh, maybe, but I also reserve my right to choose. Yeah. So like, I, I don't have to follow me. And I judge based on their vibration, based on their energy, based on their level of accomplishment. We're the average of the five people we spend the most time around. And if we're spending an hour or more on social media, we're spending time around either people who are not living the life of their dreams, not expressing resilience or strength of character or consistency of focus, or we're choosing people who have all of those things. Um, so I'm very strict on what I let in. Uh, with the notable exception of Star Trek and other science fiction that is a stimulation to my mind, I, I've read that certain sci-fi has a really high vibration, um, and I've had this experience of having my heart open, so I'm also careful in that way. Mm -hmm. um, there used to be a time when I couldn't watch, like, violent movies or, or whatnot. I think there's a balance point that people reach where they're not over-consuming material that is 
negatively charged, but they're consuming it with an ability to buffer it and mm -hmm. not, not be impacted by it negatively. Um, so yeah, I, I don't watch the news, by the way. I do occasionally get specific news fed to me that's interesting by Facebook. They've managed to worm their way into my consciousness for about like five to 10 minutes a week because it's news that I actually care about, it's interesting stuff. Um, just because the news is there, just because there's five different variants of COVID or whatever, doesn't mean it's something that we need to care about. Uh, I mean, it's, it's useful. It was useful for me to know like how long the blizzard was going to last, our first blizzard in a decade here in Austin. <laughs> so I, I use the news, but I don't let the, the news use me. Yes. So I, Thank you. I'm not Thank here. you. Thank you. Because so many people I experience right now run around like chickens with their head chopped off um, because they react to everything. There's so much out there that triggers you emotionally and people react to everything and need an opinion to everything, a reaction to everything. And I just think, wow, that looks so exhausting. That looks really exhausting. And we have to at least give uh, tools out to people to try it out, to see, hey, what happens to your stress levels, to your sleep when you don't watch TV and follow the news on a secondly basis. Um, you're a busy man. We're running out of time. What would be the three things, can we repeat, um, that we advise people to do if they are close to a burnout, if they are feeling very low and, and have ideas and are very inspired to go do something, but they just can't seem to find energy for it. <sighs> I'm glad you asked. So <laughs> there are three things that have been most impactful for me. One, meditation, whether it's 15 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour a day, that will calm and relax your nervous system because we're built in this culture to go, 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 hustle and grind, push and fight and struggle and stress and strain and eventually suffer. We're not told, hey, it's as important to relax and calm down and gather your thoughts and clear your head. So there are so many benefits to meditation, uh, mystical, energetic, emotional, spiritual, um, physiological that are measured and documented and you know, too many for me to go into here, but I've had a practice of between 15 minutes and an hour a day for about nine years. Yeah, nine years. And what I'd say is, uh, so long as you're consistent with it, it will improve every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. Every aspect, like there's so much available. Um, so that's number one. Number two, and I'll just be super rigorous and super clear. Uh, what I found, and this is coming from somebody who was on pharmaceuticals for ADHD. This is someone who was on um, supplements just to focus after I went off, even when I was still meditating. What I have found that has facilitated me being the highest energy possible, and you've seen it, you know, when I'm here uh, for our podcast, is uh, a high fruit high alkaline plant-based diet, mm -hmm. like super simple. I have a strong belief and there's a good amount of evidence so that there's a lot of conversation to have around it that we're meant to eat fruits and vegetables, um, that we benefit from fruits and vegetables. Now I'm not gonna argue with people who wanna say like, well, what about meat or not? I'm just saying emphasize more fruit and vegetables. It's easy to, to start consuming more of those plants. Um, And especially high alkaline, especially high fruit, because uh, when we do that, the body is not heavy, it's not sluggish, it's not working overtime to digest stuff. Um, we're not forcing, we're not losing energy to the process of digestion. Mm -hmm. Like it, we're still digesting things, but we're not forcing our body to digest things that are difficult for it to digest. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that was dramatic for me. That plus meditation, I mean, I was able to do uh, 
10 hour days uh, of, of work while preparing two different events on a grape juice fast, sleeping five hours a night for like weeks in 2017, just because I had meditation and I had, um, excuse me, this, this high fruit, mostly vegan uh, diet, right? And, and again, <laughs> if you wanna build true resilience, eating in a high fruit, high alkaline way will also trigger and unleash potentially trapped emotions because the frequency, the energy of fruit and vegetables is so high compared to what most people eat in terms of processed foods or lots of coffee or refined sugar or alcohol, like that literally your body will start removing crap, not just physical toxins, but it'll, it'll start detoxifying emotionally. Mm -hmm. So the more you detoxify emotionally, the easier it is to just be about your life and face whatever happens right? Without resisting. Um, so now I get to come up with a third one. The third one, because um, <laughs> those two are super clear to me. Those, clear, those two are like, what? Um, the third one is actually uh, a practice for getting into your heart or, uh, and or your body. So whether it be Qigong, Tai Chi, Yoga, Wu Su, Kung Fu, um, like the martial arts or uh, just shaking, moving and dancing. There's something about the intuitive intelligence and wisdom of the body that tells you how to do just what is most necessary and needed and, and smartest from the highest perspective rather than hustling and grinding. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a whole world to, to explore. Um, there's a practice called the Yeshua method that can be done where you, uh, and wh whether you're Christian or not, doesn't matter, it still works. Um, whether you believe, disbelieve, whatever, it's, it's the Aramaic name for Christ, uh, but Yeshua. Close your eyes, repeat it for 20 minutes uh, silently in your head, and then ask after that 20 minutes, which is built sort of like mantra yoga to clear away the clouds of chaos and the thinking, and then ask, what is it that I'm meant to do, do next in my business or in my life? And I've had amazing results, moments where I got super clear, intuitive insights into what I was supposed to do next that was super impactful in my life and world. So do just as much as you're meant to do, but don't do more than you have to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so those are three. Meditate, basically vegan diet, and uh, tune into your intuition. This is so beautiful, Louis. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Because you, again, you make it very, very clear and simple to understand. And today I learned that through your body, you influence your mind. If you take care of your body, it influences your mind. It influences the way you see yourself and the world. And that can make you a more resilient, calm person. Yeah, yeah, I, I think... Uh, it's, it's helpful to end on this, this note. Um, most people have their bodies and their minds as adversaries mm -hmm. and they're, they're literally fighting against the momentum of their bodies through the programming of how they eat, how they take care of themselves, how they sleep, whether or not they relax and life becomes so much easier when we just take better care of our bodies, then our bodies become our ally. And, and that's what I look forward to in this world is people who are super resilient through just being kind to themselves, ultimately. <laughs> yes, yes. And see your body as your best friend. And because sickness and obesity or problems with weight is the body basically telling you, hey, you're not taking good care of me and uh, we have to change something. And it's not about resenting and feeling like a victim. It's about seeing, okay, what do I need? And then becoming, yeah, one with your body, your mind, and your soul. Luis, this was so endlessly precious. It is not about spending hours and hours on time. It is about having the precise message that we want to send out there. And I feel we totally nailed it. You are so <laughs> precious. Your mission is so precious and Yeah, we, we stay connected, please. And you take really good care of yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. You too. I love you. I love your audience. You're amazing. Let's do this again. Love you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.